Hey kids, it's batteries! These are batteries, this is a battery, and gosh darn it, this is a battery too. That's right, you can even make batteries out of lemons! In America, we like to use batteries every day. And not only that, we use them on everything, ranging from calculators, to cars, to cell phones! Now, there are dozens of kinds of batteries, but one that I find particularly exciting is the lead acid battery. The lead acid battery was invented in 1859 by Gaston Planté. He's a physicist from France. His earliest model of the lead acid battery consisted of just two sheets of lead coiled and soaked in sulfuric acid. We sure have come a long way since then. The lead acid battery became the first rechargeable electric battery marketed for commercial use. In 1989, a hundred years after his death, the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences established the Gaston Planté Medal, which is awarded every few years to scientists who have made significant contributions to the development of lead acid battery technology. The lead acid battery, despite its wide use, is rather inefficient. It has a rather low energy to weight ratio and a rather low energy to volume ratio. However, they have the ability to supply high surge currents, which mean they have a relatively large power to weight ratio. This high ratio makes lead acid batteries perfect for use in cars because they can provide the high current that you need to start the car. And it doesn't hurt that they're relatively inexpensive. Hey, remember that low energy to weight ratio? Well, that tends to make lead acid batteries pretty bulky. But, in some vehicles such as forklifts, this can be an advantage. See, the forklift needs something to balance out the weight that it's lifting. The lead acid battery can help with that. In the charge state, each cell of a lead acid battery contains electrodes of lead metal and lead oxide in an electrolyte of 5.99 molar sulfuric acid. In the discharge state, both electrodes turn into lead sulfide and the electrolyte loses most of its sulfuric acid and becomes primarily water. In order to make the lead acid battery work, two chemical reactions have to take place the oxidation reaction, and the reduction reaction. Whoa! I think I went a little too fast there. Let's back up. In the oxidation reaction, one mole of solid lead reacts with one mole of aqueous sulfate ions to produce one mole of solid lead sulfate and two electrons. The reduction reaction is a little more complicated. One mole of solid lead oxide, one mole of aqueous sulfate ions, four moles of hydrogen ions, and two moles of electrons all react to form one mole of solid lead sulfate and two moles of regular old liquid water. Now it takes both of these reactions working together to start your car or operate your forklift, or drive your golf cart, whatever you want to do. And one last thing to remember, kids. When you finish with an old uh, lead acid battery, make sure you recycle it, because there are horrendous environmental consequences of improper disposal of old batteries. Luckily, the world has figured this out, and lead acid battery recycling is one of the most successful recycling programs in the world, with over 97% of all battery lead being recycled. Yay! And we all know no project is complete without a list of sources.